I'm gonna drop my fight day real soon. Make sure y'all there too. Cause these is not fing with me. None of them is fing with me. I'm trying to tell you I'm the best 140 pounder in the world. I could talk my shit all I want you. Say why? Cause there ain't nobody gonna stop me. What champions? Who you who you want first? Now, how do you think you line up against Haney? How do you line up against Roley? How do you line against um Michelle? How do you lie to convince Tio? I, I will fight any one of them guys. I will fight any one of them guys I got on the floor. Besides fighting for the IBF with Sabriel Matias. I feel like Sabriel Matias is a tough test. Any fighter. If there was another champion that wasn't as a, a, a force to be reckoned with like Sabriel Matias, I probably would have taken a to fight for the IBF. But because I know the chances entering that ring, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to be at my best. So I feel like any, but besides him, if I got, got the first opportunity I get any other belt, it'll be a great fight. I feel like Devin Haney is another force to be reckoned with, but I feel like him will be a, a high United skill fight, and I feel like I'll come out on top in that fight. So Richardson Hitchens, who is the IBF mandatory at 140 pounds for Matias, he came out explaining turning down a Matias fight for the IBF title and why he may never fight Matias. Richardson Hitchens said it's due to the 10 pounds rehydration clause rule by the IBF. Because of that, he's abandoning becoming a champion. He doesn't want to fight Matias with a 10 pounds rehydration clause, even though he never been a champion. Now the irony of it all, Hitchens fought Lemos with a 10 pounds rehydration clause. He just doesn't want to fight Matias with that same rule. What's so crazy about that, when everyone was calling Errol Spence a weight bully at 147, he fought for the IBF title for years with that same rehydration clause rule, and he never complained. Him and every single IBF champion from the beginning of time. These IBF champions never complained to the point where we didn't even know this IBF rule existed of the 10 pounds rehydration clause. It wasn't until Richardson Hitchens came out complaining about it in order to justify avoiding Matias. One thing for sure, these new generational fighters like Richardson Hitchens are not cut from the same cloth as Errol Spence and every single IBF champion from the beginning of time. Two things for certain, this is nothing but an excuse for Richardson Hitchens to avoid Matias because he believes Matias will stop him especially after watching the limos fight. I mean, there's no doubt in my mind, Matias will stop Richardson Hitchens. And from Richardson Hitchens' actions, he believes that as well. Now, the reason why I said this is nothing but an excuse, if the champion is not Matias, I guarantee you, Richardson Hitchens will be fighting for the IBF title in a heartbeat. If the champion was Tiafama Lopez, you wouldn't be hearing Richardson Hitchens complain about the 10 pound rehydration clause. I know that for certain due to the things Richardson Hitchens said out of his own mouth. Let me explain. See, the most dangerous weapon in the world is a microphone and a camera. Word to my man Dante. The reason behind that, Richardson Hitchens got caught up completely contradicting himself, being a complete hypocrite, at least when it came to the things he said out of his own mouth. So when Richardson Hitchens was speaking on Devin Haney versus Javante, Richardson revealed that Javante Davis told him a hundred times that he will fight Devin Haney at 140 pounds without a rehydration clause. Then a week after Richardson Hitchens started talking about, if I was Javante, I wouldn't fight Devin Haney without a rehydration clause. And I'm sitting over here like, wait a minute, you complaining about the rehydration clause according to the IBF rules against Matias to the point where you turned down your first title shot to become a champion. But if you was in Javante's shoes, you wouldn't fight Devin Haney without a rehydration clause, even though Javante already told you over a hundred times that he will fight Devin Haney at 140 pounds without a rehydration clause. Well, that's a complete contradiction. That's the ultimate hypocrisy right there. Do you, do you think he'll go to 140 to make the fight happen or catch weight? He said, he said, he said it a hundred times. He said it to me a hundred times. He'll fight Devin Haney no rehydration clause. And that's what he, that's what he said to me. But what's he said the, he'll fight Devin Haney no. 
I'm confused because what's the difference? I mean, I I see Haney has more skills than Ryan, but Ryan got hit with the the hydration clause. I don't know. Maybe at that time, Tank never seen Ryan in person. He probably thought Ryan was a real big dude. He probably, you know, we don't we don't know. Uh, Tank never met Ryan. He probably thought Ryan was a, a, a big dude. He probably wanted to make, fight at a be, make it at an even playing field. Ryan wasn't a champion at one forty at that time. Ryan was still a one thirty five pounder. Technically, he was still like ranked everything at one thirty five. So I feel like Tank that when that fight of him and Ryan fighting, the idea for Tank was always for it to be at one thirty five. But like now, Devin is vocal about it. Tank is realized is realizing like this fight that it has to be at one forty if I want to. He, I feel like Tank is a fighter. He's he'll, he'll have if he is who I believe he is. He's gonna go to one forty. He's gonna get the job. Mm. If I was Tank and if I would advise him. I wouldn't fight Devin Haney without no rehydration clause because Devin Haney's jumping up to 165 a night of the night of the bout. That's crazy. Like I don't that that was a big that was a big topic. You don't normally see, you don't normally see fighters jump up that big. If the world can't uh fault tank for wanting to fight these guys at, at a catch rate. Yeah, that's yeah, that's my friend. But I don't think that he should jump into a fight with uh Devin without some type of clause or something because it'd be on an even playing field when it comes to Devin and Tank. Clearly, Tank is cut from a different cloth than Richardson Hitchens, who doesn't even want to become a champion. To make matters worse, Richardson Hitchens started lying about Javante, claiming that Tank doesn't want to fight Devin Haney at 140 pounds without a rehydration clause. When he was the one that told the public, Tank told him over a hundred times he will fight Devin Haney at 140 pounds without a rehydration clause. He wouldn't have it any other way. When have we ever heard of that? Or if you want to fight, you want to fight. He would fight Tank at 140. I mean, he would fight Tank with a, a rehydration clause to make the fight happen because that's his biggest money fight. That's the legacy fight. And Tank, Tank don't want to uh, go up to 140 and, and fight and let Devin go up to 65. So why you don't meet Tank at a catchweight since you feel like we never heard of that? And then the guy keeps saying, oh, uh, he got to come do it again or he got to go beat Matias. The guy know he ain't never be beat no killer. There ain't nobody he ever fought that. Nobody was not trying to fight. I, I guess Richardson Hitchens was so busy hating on Devin Haney, he forgot he was the one that broke the news. Now he done got caught up lying on camera. So apparently behind the scenes, Tank told Richardson Hitchens, I'm going to fight Devin Haney at 140 without a rehydration clause. However, Richardson tried to convince Tank otherwise by telling Javante, nah, man, don't do that. If I was you, I would put a rehydration clause in there. How about this? Keep that same energy, Hitchison. Talk it how you walk it. Do exactly what you told Javante Tank Davis to do. And fight Matias under the IBF rules of the 10 pounds rehydration clause. Why are you complaining about that? Especially when you're telling Tank to do exactly that. That's the raw truth. Hitchens is saying one thing, however his action speaks another. Just like he recently said he needs a tuna fight or a stay busy fight. Like wait a minute, what do you need a stay busy fight for? Hitchens is on record stating that he's the best 140 pounder. If you are the best 140 pounder, why do you need a tuna fight or a stay busy fight? Unless you really feel like you lost to Lemos and you need a confident booster type of fight. That's the only explanation. To make matters worse, the Lemos fight was supposed to be a tuna fight. He called Lemos a bum. However, after the fight, he said, if Devin Haney fought Lemos, he would have had struggled with him too. I'm over here thinking like, wait a minute. What the heck your shortcomings have to do with Devin Haney? Devin Haney, at 20 years old, he was calling out pound for pound number one according to old media Lomachenko, and he made Lomachenko at the time vacate the WBC belt in order to duck Devin Haney, since Devin was his mandatory. Despite what Hitchison is saying, at that time Lomachenko was more of a boogeyman than Matias. He was bullying Tank in the media. He was bullying a lot of fighters and Devin Haney bullied him. On the other hand, Richardson Hitchens, at 26 years old, 
he did the exact opposite as the mandatory for Matias. Richardson Hitchens turned down the Matias fight. Comparing Haney to Hitchinson is like comparing apples to rocks. Lomachenko will stop Hitchinson. And Lemos had Richardson looking crazy. Let's be clear. Devin beat Lomachenko nine rounds to three. And Devin was always comfortable. He wasn't looking crazy how Hitchison was looking against Lemos. I told you guys Hitchison doesn't have an inside game. Due to that, the Lemos fight looked like Adrian Broner versus Maidana. On the other hand, when Devin Haney fought Lomachenko, he was comfortable in the pocket. He was beating Lomachenko at his own game. It was Devin Haney who was backing up Lomachenko, beating him up to the body and the head to the point where Loma had to go to the hospital after the fight and Devin went to the club. We haven't seen Lomachenko back since and Devin Haney is on his road to his second fight against Ryan Garcia. And we all know Lemos ain't no Lomachenko, but the way Richardson Hitchens made Lemos look, he made him seem like Lomachenko and Javante combined together. Richardson Hitchens was so uncomfortable in that fight, which is the main reason why he doesn't want to fight Matias, who is a way better puncher, obviously. A bigger guy, throws more punches, he's more relentless, and he closes the gap better while applying more pressure than Lemos does. So you add all of that up, that smells like a recipe for disaster for Richardson Hitchens. That's why he doesn't want to fight. Not because of the rehydration clause. I told you guys, after Hitchens got a gift decision against Lemos, they asked him in the ring, you the IBF mandatory or are you going to fight Matias next? He said, ah, oh, no, he started complaining about the rehydration clause and things of that sort. Then he deflected to call out the winner of Devin Haney versus Ryan. When he knows damn well, he is not the mandatory for Devin Haney, he's the mandatory for Matias. Even when Devin Haney said, I want to become undisputed at 140 pounds. Hitchens responded with like, yeah, let's get it. And I'm over here thinking, what are you talking about? Let's get it. You are not a champion. You only a mandatory for Matias. If you really want to get it, go fight Matias, beat Matias. Then obviously you're going to line yourself up to fight Devin Haney that way. I could tell you this, Devin Haney want to fight Hitchens too. But the problem is, Hitchens sold like 100 tickets his last fight. And he doesn't even have a belt. Nor is he Devin Haney mandatory. So why the heck will Devin Haney fight him right now? If Hitchens want to fight Devin Haney, he will fight Matias in order to put himself in position. Other than that, he's only cloud chasing Devin Haney. And he doesn't want the smoke with Devin Haney either. Just like he doesn't want the Matias smoke. But guess who does? That's right. A fighter that Richardson Hitchens envies and is jealous of the most. You see, Matias is really the boogeyman at 140 pounds because recently he revealed that he couldn't get anybody to fight him at 140 pounds over there on PBC. Pitbull didn't want to fight him. Pitbull was interested to move up to fight Roley, but not Matias. Javante didn't want to move up to fight Matias, so PBC was only offering him fights at 147 against the likes of Jerron Ennis and things of that sort. However, Matias didn't want to move up to 147 himself because he said the mega fights for him are at 140 pounds. Then Matias was actually about to sign with Top Rank, but Top Rank wouldn't guarantee him a fight with Tio Fuma Lopez because Tio wouldn't agree to fight him. So all that Cap and Tio have been doing as of late about fighting Matias, that's all Cap. Tio himself also turned down the Matias fight. Now, obviously, the last option was Matchroom. And because Bill Haney contacted Matias' team in order to fight, he knew that Devin Haney was the only guy that's willing to fight him. That's why he signed with Matchroom. I say all of this to point out. Tio from Lopez, Duck, Matias... Richardson Hitchens, who's also with Matchroom, ducked Matias. Pitbull didn't want to fight Matias. And all of these fighters really didn't want to fight Matias. Even Shakur Stevenson, he said Matias is a bad man. Somebody at 140 needs to fight him. 
Now, I'm not sure if Shakur was taking shots at Hitchens, who turned down a Matias fight and wasn't on good terms with Shakur anymore after the Edwin De Los Santos criticism of saying that the fight could have went either way, or if he was actually going at Devin Haney. Perhaps both. Either way, when they asked Shakur about fighting Teofimo Lopez, he said, I want to fight Tio at 140. He called out Tio to fight at 140. Not just Teofimo. Shakur said he want to fight Devin Haney to replace Ryan Garcia as an opponent, stop the circus. He started saying that he want to be the replacement opponent for Ryan Garcia. He even told Devin Haney to pull out of the Ryan fight just to fight him. A bunch of nonsense because when Devin was available, he wasn't saying all of that. Then Shakur told Ryan Garcia that he want to fight him at 140, win or lose, even though he was just telling Devin Haney to stop the circus against Ryan. But ironically, Shakur want to have a circus against Ryan. Completely double talking, completely contradicting himself, just like Hitchens. Now I'm saying all of this to point out when they asked Shakur about Matias though. Even though he has a belt, Shakur said, I will fight him, but I'm at 135 right now. Oh, really? You at 135 right now, but you want to fight Tio at 140. You said you're willing to replace Ryan to fight Devin. You said you're willing to fight Ryan at 140. But when it came to Matias, Shakur said, oh, I'm at 135. I'm not planning to move up. So even Shakur doesn't want the smoke with Matias. That's why he's telling these 140 pounders to fight him. And I'm telling you right now, that's a 50-50 fight. I wouldn't be surprised if Matias beat a Shakur because Shakur himself doesn't like that type of pressure, nor is he that comfortable to fight in the inside. He likes to fight at a certain range. However, guess who said, I want to fight the boogeyman. We want to fight the boogeyman. How much does the boogeyman want to fight me? That's right, Devin Haney. Time and time again, Devin Haney shows with his action. All of these fighters are boogeymen until the A-class boogeyman pulls up, and that's Devin Haney. Devin Haney, who is younger than Hitchens, is doing what Hitchens is afraid to do, and that's fight the boogeyman. Ladies and gentlemen, Hitchens doesn't have a room to speak or criticize anything about Devin Haney because Devin Haney is willing to fight the man Hitchens is afraid of even though Devin Haney is already in a better position than Hitchens like I said Hitchens last fight he sold like less than a thousand tickets it was embarrassing and I like Hitchens but all of this hate gotta stop because you showing it ain't nothing but jealousy envy and hatred toward Devin Haney because he's doing things that you are afraid to do. How about you grow the cojones and do what Devin Haney is doing? Fight Matias, cut off the supply since Devin Haney want to become undisputed, get the belt. That way, if you want to fight Devin Haney for big money, you are lining up yourself to do so. But if you're going to continue calling out Devin Haney without putting yourself in position, we got to call a spade a spade. And that's nothing but cloud chasing. With the facts being laid out, drop your thoughts in the comment section below. Subscribe below. And to be continued on the next episode of Akhi TV. Peace out. Wa alaikum as salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I'm gonna drop my fight day real soon. Make sure y'all there too. Cause these niggas is not with me. None of them is with me. I'm trying to tell you I'm the best 140 pounder in the world. I could talk my all I want to say why? Cause there ain't nobody gonna stop me. Just go back to the drawing board, uh, see who's available. Uh, take, I think that still um, maybe maybe one more fight before going for world world title. You know, get some more experience. What are your three dream fights that you can have? Dream fights. Me and Tank, me and Matias, me and Tio. That'd be huge. Devin, do, do you think it'll happen? I think so. Yeah. I think so. Oh, it depends, you know. I know they. I know they want me. I know I'm the guy that, you know, I'm the. I'm the guy that bullies the bullies. I'm the guy that steps up. You know what I'm saying? When nobody wants to, I'm the guy that you know steps in and saves the day. So they might need me to come save the day and go fight um, Matias. They might need me to go because you know guys say they, they that they that that they want to become champion, but then they say they that oh 
it's a weight um, hydration hydration limit on uh, the IBF rules or something like that. You can't you you what, since when did we ever do this? It's, you've never been a world champion before. You've never accomplished nothing, and you talking about a, a, a um, rehydration a rehydration limit. Like you, somebody. You're not. You're not nobody. So, like I said, they might need me to step in. You know, say today and uh, bully the bully, fight the guys that these guys don't want to fight, and uh, I will. You what do you think of? And I said, I said, oh, I never. I don't know about. You know, I'm not really interested in being undisputed, but now I am. So at 140. At 140. What do you make of like the boogeyman aura? Like the, they're trying to portray to on um, Matias. Nah, they're using that to sell him. They're using that to sell him, but he ain't no boogeyman to me. Mm -hmm. And. After this fight, if he want if he, if he want to explore the fight, I'm no no no. If he wants to fight, he's with he's with Eddie. I'm 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 over here with Eddie. Me and Eddie work together. That fight could be made. You still interested in 140? If Tio want it, I'm over here at top ring right now. We can make that fight too. So <laughs> yeah, I know, yeah, yeah. listen, I'm I'm you're I'm, everywhere. I'm everywhere. Listen, Do you I'm, think it's a, it, it, it don't matter. I'm, I want to make the, the biggest fights happen with the best fighters in the world because I truly believe I'm the best. And I'm not and I'm not just talking. I'm not on Twitter just saying this. You know what I'm saying? No, I'm for real. It seems and, and like... My, my, check my resume. It, it shows. It seems like you're like one of the only ones actually doing it where other fighters are just attaching themselves to one and you're but freely the, going around. Yeah. And, of the younger guys, I am the only yeah. one doing it.